This video is sponsored by MicroCenter. MicroCenter is one of the best places to shop for all of your technology needs. Desktops, laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs, networking equipment, you name it. You'll find the best prices available whether you're looking online or in the stores for in-store pickup. I actually built my first PC at MicroCenter and owe it a bit of a thanks for helping start this career. The Houston location was a bit of a home for me and I actually would create a couple of my other builds at that same MicroCenter as well. MicroCenter even wants to offer new customers a free SSD. Just see the link in the description for more information. Also, make sure to check the pinned comment and the description for more information about MicroCenter. Thanks for sponsoring this video, MicroCenter. And back to the video, detectives. Greetings, detectives. This is a bit of an unlikely project to some watching now to find on this series, I must admit, up front. But I think after seeing this interesting story unfold and just simply how rare high-spaced multiplayer games are, which is exactly the multiplayer online game we are covering in this video, it'll convince you otherwise. Hood. Outlaws and Legends, developed by Sumo Digital Newcastle and published by Focus, was a medieval heist third-person stealth 4 vs 4 action game. If that sounds like a mouthful, don't worry. It'll all make sense afterwards. Damn, we're doing clues in the intros now? Outlaws vs. Outlaws, PvPvE style inspired by the likes of Assassin's Creed's multiplayer, Tarkov, and Hunt Showdown, which featured similar designs. As an asymmetrical game, you played against both the AI and the enemy team at the same time. Hood, on the other hand, exploded into the market with a unique premise and intriguing stealth objective-focused design only to be dragged out on a stretcher with a recent player count of under 40 players peak and 20 on average. With all the hype subsiding and the end looking near for Hood, Outlaws, and Legends, why hasn't Hood been able to profit on the increase of PvPvE games and why hasn't it been able to capture any of the current or future audience's attention? In this episode of Death of a Game, ripe for the series, we take a look at a stealth-based action game that had the potential to win many of our hearts. Pay attention to the clues along the way, because at the end of the video, we'll make our final deduction based on all the clues and evidence presented. And at the very, very end, you're given a hint as to what the subject of the next video will be. But detectives, who are now outlaws for the purpose of this video, let's not waste any more time. And uh, don't tell the guards, but we have a treasure to capture, and uh, a case to solve. The story begins in 2003, when Carl Cavers, Paul Porter, Darren Mills, and James North Hearn established Sumo Digital. Over the next 15 years, they would release a flurry of portable games as well as several lower-budget PS3 games, achieving a moderate level of success in the video game industry. They're essentially contract developers who were hired to work on specific games or projects, as evidenced by their work on a variety of ports, Sonic titles, and even Little Big Planet 3. Co-development has been the method of choice for the most important titles that they've worked on. Regardless of the lack of a major hit for Sumo Digital, they had been developing games for 15 years and had a long history of titles under their belt by 2018. But the early goings of the case don't just contain one developer with a long history in game development, but another, one more familiar to those watching now, CCP of EVE Online fame. CCP Newcastle specifically, the developer responsible for the virtual reality spin-off game, EVE Valkyrie, that didn't do too bad, really. It's not the worst blemish on their report card, though. The worst blemish is actually Project Nova, which was supposed to be the first-person EVE spin-off component that was shelved due to poor audience reception and testing phases, and may or may not be rebooted under a different developer. Though there was still a chance, according to the press release, that Sumo Digital Newcastle, aka XCCP Newcastle, could still work on EVE projects going forward. So after the loss of their previous project and its recent acquisition by Sumo Digital, CCP Newcastle, alias Sumo Digital Newcastle now, was eager to capitalize on their newfound momentum and support to produce a AAA game. With their history being rooted in shooters, it was almost a guarantee that was the path that they would choose. They still surprised everyone on August 7th, 2020, when Sony would reveal a new game from Sumo Newcastle dubbed Hood, Outlaws, and Legends. 
Hood, as we will start to call it now to shorten things and to increase our street credit, is a third-person stealth action, 4 vs. 4 cooperative game set in a medieval-looking world. You and three other players, assuming the role of outlaws, are tasked with stealing the treasure from an oppressive government known as the state. In this PvPvE game, two teams of four attempt to outwit each other and the AI guards patrolling the goods. It will require teamwork, coordination, and tactics to escape unscathed with the treasure in tow. The game was originally intended to be a cooperative game with a bit of a darker interpretation of Robin Hood, but it was reworked to be a competitive PvPvE title to reflect the team's expertise with competitive multiplayer games. Personally, I don't think this is a compelling enough argument to make your game suddenly PvP when it kind of had this original design, but I can't say I blame them for relying on their strengths. More information would be given later, but the initial concept of a heist theme-based 4 vs 4 PvPvE game seemed at the very least a fascinating prospect. When questioned about more details concerning their new title, Hood, Owen O'Brien, the studio head, stated that, With Hood, we wanted to create a dark and brutal reimagining of the traditional legend, where old world myth and superstition clashed with man-made power and corruption. We also wanted to bring a new and fresh twist to the multiplayer heist genre. The closed beta would start sometime in January of 2021, giving players the first time to test the game. It's reported that as early as this time, some of the early cracks and flaws with Hood were already beginning to form. Hood is a game made up of three stages. One to steal the key from the sheriff to a vault, then grab the treasure, then finally escape with said treasure. Comparisons with Hunt Showdown were made about the game involving this task on top of being a competitive multiplayer. Though Hood was a bit more objective-focused, while Hunt Showdown had a bit of a more open-ended approach. Where things get interesting is Hood is effectively based on Robin Hood and would require more utilizing stealth than the traditional Hunt Showdown game. Game director Andrew Willens would say, however, that Sumo doesn't expect nor want players to fully stealth a match. Andrew would express a desire for more friction to create the fun and drama, so maps were designed to funnel teams to potential engagements. This didn't outright seem like a bad idea because he's not saying that they just get into a fight, it just means engagements in terms of just general engagements, right? Not just fighting. But if Hood's combat system was enough to snuff and it did get to a fight, with such a focus on a non-combat system in your game, it was going to make for a lackluster experience, constantly resulting in boring or frustrating encounters. It's hard not to focus on non-combat systems and they don't in some way take away from your combat system, at least in the case of Hood. At the end of each match, you would trigger the Scales of Justice event, which was the end screen displaying your stats as well as your ability to split your earned gold. You can choose to keep the gold for yourself or give the gold to your people in the stash. Keeping the gold for yourself allows you to buy cosmetics and weapons for your character, while giving the money to your stash allows it to level up and unlock more weapons and cosmetics. That means that while your hideout levels up, it actually has no effect on the gameplay, which in my opinion made it and surrounding lore around it feel a bit more gimmicky in execution. After announcing a launch set for May 10th and a pre-order early access launch the 7th, three days before, Sumo would reveal Hood's roadmap for upcoming content, and the air effectively would be let out of the balloon. Deflating to say the least, as fans wondered and questioned, why is a AAA game only getting one new map, one game mode, and one character a year? Which was shockingly low for a AAA game, even if it wasn't a full price game coming in at $30 retail. $30 is actually still quite the bar, when you compare it to the slew of free action games out there on the market especially. Because although people might purchase Hood Outlaws and Legends, would they continue to play the game if it didn't have enough content offering to rival the free-to-play games that they can just, remember, play for free? That was going to be a tough question going into the game's launch. Hood would be released in Early Access May 7th, 2021, and follow that three days later with a multi-platform worldwide launch May 10th, 2021. On aggregate review website Metacritic, Hood would score a 62 out of 100 from 21 different critics. According to Steam from 5,000 user reviews, the game only had scored a 53%, coming in at a mixed review score, which certainly wasn't any better. Starting with the criticism from video game outlets, PC Gamer would state that Hood was an accessible online heist game with some fun systems that wrestle with clumsy combat and an ugly presentation, scoring the game a 68 out of 100. IGN, on the other hand, would score the title a 6 out of 10. Hood Outlaws and Legends is a multiplayer stealth action game that rewards sloppiness over cunning. That can be fun, but it also badly needs more content. 
IGN, like PC Gamer and other critics, were dissatisfied with Hood Outlaws and Legends meta devolving into just plain deathmatch. In part because the stealth gameplay was done actually really well, but also because it was a frustrating experience to just go through the two of the three phases stealthily and do all the objectives, only for the final phase, aka the winching phase we'll call it from here on, where you escape with the treasure, alerts the enemy team to your location, resulting always in a battle. Not to mention at any point an enemy player can just choose to make the game radioactive and start a fight even earlier than that if they were able to find the enemy team. While having choice is a good thing in a video game, the problem with giving players the choice to straight teamfight at points of the game is just having brain-dead teamfights is just the most likely outcome. Meaning, what's more likely? You queue with random players and get the perfect stealth-like experience? <laughs> or one of you just messes up and just decides to go guns blazing? When that's an actual legitimate route that's actually supported by the last phase, then no wonder many games just devolve into 4 vs 4 PvP matches. Because it's like the developers didn't realize that there is no greater deterrent in life and game design than death. Which means had permadeath been some real thing in a thought experiment, if you will, the players wouldn't choose violence so easily. They would actually have their lives at risk in an actual heist. They wouldn't just jump the rival gang because they felt bored or felt like it which is always a possibility in a video game, right? There needed to be either more of a penalty for doing this or straight less support in the game design itself for such an outcome. But that was going to be hard to do now, post-launch, especially when Hood was, as you guys remembered, built on the entire idea that it's not a stealth game, but a heist game. So combat, as the main director had said, was absolutely planned into the game. The other reasons Hood simply becoming a combat arena is bad as well because the other common criticism of the game from critics and players alike is concerning the game's combat system itself. It was a standard attack block and stamina system that felt sort of out of place for a game that had assassinations. Yeah, you heard that right. Assassins creed like assassinations. Not that I'm completely against them, but the combat being a mixture of regular combat and auto kills was going to make for a hard balance. And you didn't want the combat to just become musical assassinations either, which often did happen, unfortunately. To make matters worse, they put the assassination button on the same bind as the use button. So while you're trying to assassinate somebody, you could actually just perform a random action that you weren't really trying to perform instead. And you couldn't rebind it either, because the game actually didn't allow for rebinding including your push to talk key. So if you didn't like the push to talk key, good luck because there wasn't any text chat either and you couldn't rebind it. So on top of that, if you didn't have a microphone, you get the idea. I'm not sure the exact reasons for this, but I can wager it had something to do with the fact that Hood was very clearly a console port. While this in itself isn't some sin, having a bunch of binding issues, capping FPS at 60, were kind of the worst parts of it. So on top of the possibility of poor combat ruining your Hood experience, you had to deal with unruly keybinds and the curse of a console port on top of it all. Echoing throughout pretty much every review on the game, including the most positive ones, was the simple fact that Hood was severely lacking in content, and was planning on releasing said content at a molasses content tempo on top of it all, really compressing the issues. Players already felt like there wasn't much to do in the game after playing the few maps with no rank system, the only progression really came from the weapon progressions. And there wasn't an if if they were going to come up with magical content that was going to save the day, with their roadmap already kind of release, that effectively meant that Hood was dead out of the water nearly straight out of the gate, and the population would reflect that. Whereas at launch, Hood had an impressive just under 9,000 peak player count, Within a single month, it lost 89% of its population now at a low of 575 players peak and only 173 on average. Players were now struggling to even find a map, let alone to see a future for the game. Sumo Newcastle was slow to move, showing the often weakness of a AAA project, and wouldn't introduce significant changes until their first season content patch. Hood would be getting a new outlaw, Ida, free for all players. Instead of just the one promised map, they would also be unveiling two new maps in the update as well, as well as a cooperative PvE mode that could be played against the AI. But more importantly, due to the issues of a hemorrhaging player base, the winch system would be getting a much needed update. Now the winch phase would allow for both teams to winch for the treasure chest. The new changes would also be score-based, greatly rewarding activities such as pickpocketing the sheriff, 
would now give players a greater reward trying to stealth and complete the objectives in the game versus just going guns blazing. While this is certainly a good change, I think the issues with it are as I outlined previously concerning a core game design issue. A simple fix like this would be putting a band-aid on top of a gaping wound. The issue is the combat system, and the game ever really devolving to 4 vs 4 in the first place is also part of the problem. At that point, in this point, they have to make do with what they have, but would it be enough to bring back old or at least some new players in? After the update, the population would pop up to 1,381 peak players, and 149 on average, but after yet another month, that population would dive back down to an all-time low of 75 players peak, and 19 on average. The jump up in population I think shows that the changes around the winch system were greatly warranted and needed, but as I said, just not enough. The PvE mode is a good idea. The problem there though is that the AI in the game is notoriously weak and downright dumb at times. Sumo Newcastle had to make the sheriff basically insta-kill you because of that, because it seemed like they couldn't figure out another way to design the encounter or the AI. The rest of the AI being nearly trivial and mostly a botherance doesn't really help matters either. So even if Sumo tried to pivot to PvE, the AI is too poor to offer a considerable challenge or even really be that fun. So it's like every move made with the Season 1 patch was good, but either just not enough, or just too late to make a lasting effect. If you wanted to go a step further, you could say that the game was also just doomed from design. By the end of 2021, the population was at a staggering low 56 peak players and 14 on average. Sumo's answer to their game starting to falter to death level populations was Battle Pass. I wish I was kidding, but yep. That was Season 2, a Battle Pass and a bunch of cosmetic skins. I wish I could say that Hood, a fairly interesting concept, rather poorly executed, was a victim of circumstance, or luck like some titles on the series are. But after each mistake made, it seemed more and more like Sumo's inexperience and poor game design choices were leading to the majority of their issues. They had a history of doing it at this point too, with their recent three projects amounting to critical failures. Being attached to a publisher probably wasn't helping matters and could be why things like a battle pass had to get squeezed out, but that's just a bit of speculation. 2022 wouldn't be any kinder to the Robin Hood-inspired competitive PvPvE title with population in February at peak now down to just 36 players and 10 players average. With population now for a number of months too low to even have proper matchmaking and updates since launch at a snail pace, the future of Hood, Outlaws, and Legends seems all but decided at this point. It's probably due for an assassination anytime soon. Before we go into our final deduction, there's a few more things I wanted to cover regarding Hood. Let's start with the name in the world itself, modeled after Robin Hood, with inspiration from real-world locations, but the actual story and usage of said inspirations are just minuscule at best, and I can't help but feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. There's something fun about the idea of a crew-based heist game set in a fun and more heartfelt Robin Hood universe, maybe? If anything, it could have been an opportunity to not go so serious regarding presentation and graphics and in the end kind of getting a little too generic. Barely utilizing the rich world of thievery you based your game on, though, was a strong miss from Sumo. If you're hearing that music, that means that Tom is cueing me in that it's time to put this case to bed. And knowing him, probably yesterday. <laughs> Let's combine all the gathered clues and evidence and crack the case, detectives. Poor and lackluster combat you were shoehorned into. A console port, unable to rebind keys and stuck at 60 FPS. A $30 price tag is hard to ask for gamers for a game that's beatable in a few months at most. Lacking launch content with a snail pace and post-launch content to boot. Non-existent lore and IP usage. Poor and trivial AI. Flawed and limited game design. While it might seem like I have a bone to pick with Sumo Digital based on how this episode of Death of a Game went, but I actually quite enjoy what Hood had to offer at least as a tease, it left me, like many others, wanting more. Now I want to adventure with my friends in some high space game be met with more decisions of who to ally with or mutiny with. 
Ice-based or crew-based games are probably some of my favorite games. I loved playing Kane and Lynch, Payday later on, Guns of Icarus, and even the space combat in Star Wars Galaxies. But like many other players, there just isn't enough in Hood to keep me interested past a few play sessions. No true sense of progression, no end game, no end goal. And to me, one of the coolest parts about playing a high space game is taking the loot back home and celebrating. But there was no one to celebrate with, and nothing to really celebrate. In the end, you had a bit of fun in Hood, but it was a hollow, fleeting sort of fun. And that's the best way to describe the game, unfortunately. A hollow, fleeting fun. It's not like Sumo Digital overall is some small, lacking in resources company either. They have more than 700 total employees across 10 studios. They just didn't have the right formula in an otherwise quite interesting PvPvE gameplay genre. Thanks for watching, detectives.